ಸೋಮತಿ ನಂದನ ಭ್ರಜ ಪರನಾಕರ ಗೋಕುಲರಂಜನ ಜಸೋಮತಿ ನಂದನ ಭ್ರಜ ಬಾರನಾಕರ ಗೋಕುಲರಂಜನ ಗೋಪಿ ಪರನ್ನ ಧನ್ನ ಮಾಧನ ಮನೋಹರ ಗೋಪಿ ಪರನ್ನ ಧನ್ನ ಮಾಧನ ಮನೋಹರ ಕಲಯದ ಮಾನವಿಧಾನ ಕಲಯ ಧಮಾನ ವಿಧಾನ ಅಮಲ ಹರಿ ನಾಮ ಅಮಿಯ ವಿಲಾಸ ಅಮಲ ಹರಿ ನಾಮ ಅಮಿಯ ವಿಲಾಸ ವಿಪಿನ ಪುರಂದರ ನಾಭಿನ್ನ ನಗರ ಪರ ವಂಶಿ ಪದಾನ ಸುಭಾಷ ವಿಪಿನ ಪುರಂದರ ನಾಭಿನ್ನ ನಗರ ಪರ ಸಂಸಿ ಪದಾನ ಸುಭಾಷ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನ ಪಾಲನ ಸುರ ಕುಲ ನಾಶನ ನಂದ ಗೋಡಾನ ರಾಖೋ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನ ಪಾಲನ ಸುರ ಕುಲ ನಾಶನ ನಂದ ಗೋಡಾನ ರಾಖೋ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾಧವ ನವನಿತ ಸಾಸ್ಕರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾಧವ ನವನಿತ ಸಾಸ್ಕರ ಸುಂದರ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಸುಂದರ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಯಮೋನ ಸತ್ಚರ ಗೋಪಿ ವಾಸನಹಾರ ಯಾಮನ ಸತ್ಚರ ಗೋಪಿ ವಾಸನಹಾರ ಪ್ರಸಾರಸಿಕ ಕೃಪ ಪ್ರಸಾರಸಿಕ ಕೃಪ ಶ್ರೀ 
Shri Radha Bala Bhavinda Vana Nata Bada Shri Radha Bala Bhavinda Vana Nata Bada Bhakati Vinoda Shraya Bhakati Vinoda Shraya Amala Harinam Ami Abhilasa Amala Harinam Ami Abhilasa Govinda Madhava Navanita Taskara Govinda Madhava Navanita Taskara Shri Radha Pallava Vrindavana Natavara Shri Radha Pallava Vrindavana Natavara Bhakati Vinoda Shraya Bhakati Vinoda Shraya Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Gopi Chana Bala Bhagiri Bhartashi Gopi Chana Bala Bhagiri Bhartashi Yashoda Nandhana Prajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandhana Prajajana Ranjana Yamuna Thira Vana Chahari Yamuna Thira Vana Chahari Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Gopichana Bala Bhagiri Bhartashi
Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Hira Vanachari Yamuna Hira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pistaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Iti Namane, Namaste Sarasati Devi, Goravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, 
ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया इन श्रीमद् भागवतम in the tenth canto tells about how Lord Krishna gave instructions to his family members when he was residing in Dwarka. He was concerned that the family members did not become proud of all of the opulence which they were enjoying in Dwarka. So it happened that one day the children of the Yadu dynasty were playing in the forest and after some time they all became overwhelmed by thirst and they went looking for a well to find some water to drink. But what they found was in the bottom of a well there was a big lizard which appeared to be almost like a hill and it was in the bottom of the well. So the children tried to get the lizard out of the well but they were not able to do it and so they went back to the city of Dwarka and they told Lord Krishna about what had happened and Lord Krishna because he's the Supreme Lord, he is omniscient, he knows everything. So he came along with the children, he came to the well and Lord Krishna simply put his left hand into the well and just from the touch of his hand he was able to bring out the lizard. But the amazing thing happened was that when he brought, out, when he brought the lizard out the lizard transformed, changed his body and be revealed himself in a golden effulgent form dressed in beautiful cloth with garland and ornaments and indeed he showed himself to be a demigod. So Lord Krishna knew everything but still for the purpose of instructing his family members who were present there, he requested, he requested that king or that demigod, he asked him, who are you? How did you, how was it you were in that body of a lizard in the bottom of a well? What happened? that you were placed into that situation. So then the demigod began to explain about what had happened to him and he described how he was actually King Nriga and he said, I'm a descendant in the line of Ikshvaku. Maharaj Ikshvaku is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the history of the Bhagavad Gita in the fourth chapter. Imam Vivishvate Yogam Proktavam Aham Avyayam Vivishvan Manave Prahur Manur Ikshvakave Bravit. Lord Krishna described that previously. I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god. The sun god instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind, and Manu gave it to his son Ikshvaku. And in this way the knowledge was delivered to the line of saintly kings. So Maharaj Ikshvaku was like the head of this line of saintly kings. And this demigod who had been brought out initially oh, Hare Krishna. 
initially in the form of a lizard, this demigod transformed into the, well, from the lizard he became the demigod. He revealed himself in this celestial form of a demigod. So, Lord Krishna wanted to hear why this person had been in the body of a lizard. So Maharaj Nriga began to explain his past. He said, previously I was this king, Nriga, and I was accustomed to give charity. I would give charity in big quantities, not small quantities. You know, we put a few ringgits in the box, but Maharaj Nriga would give charity in a big way. He would give thousands of cows in charity. And not only would he give cows, but he would give also gold. Because if you just give someone cows, it's a lot of money to maintain cows, right? <laughs> it costs a lot to take care of cows, you have to look after them, they're, they're domestic animals and they need, we need them, they need us. And so when you have a cow, you have to have grass, you have to have land for them to graze on and you have to give them water. Just like Lord Krishna, when Lord Krishna was residing in Vrindavan, every day he'd take the cows grazing. The cowherd boys and the cowherd men, every day they go into the forests of Vrindavan and they would take the cows and when Krishna was a young boy he would take the calves and they would go and take the cows. They would take the cows to places like Govardhan where there was nice grasses growing and they would take them where the Yamuna is also so they could drink the nice water which flows in the Yamuna. So in this way the cows would be happy eating the grass and drinking the water from the Yamuna. So Maharaj Nriga was giving charity, very nice cows, not sick cows. We, had, we have one temple in Nepal. And so devotees told me in Nepal that they were given some land with some cows. All the cows were sick. <laughs> All the cows were sick. So they had to spend a lot of money just to take care of the cows, to get medicines and treatment for them. And sometimes, you know, people have the cows will be old. You know, old cows won't give milk. But you still have to feed them. Just like old people. <laughs> old people in, in old age, we're not working, but we still eat. <laughs> right? And so some, uh, to give people, if you give people old cows, it's, it's a burden, it's a responsibility to take care of old cows. So Maharaj Nriga, he gave young cows who only had one calf. And so they were giving a lot of milk. And these cows were very healthy and they were very beautiful. They were very well behaved. You know, you, sometimes you get cows that are really stubborn and they can be really nasty sometimes. But these cows which Maharaj Nega gave in charity, they were all very gentle, well-behaved cows. Because they knew they were being taken care of. When the cows are properly cared for, then they will be gentle. We have to learn to take care of the cows. And then they will be not, they will be they will, be, they will behave nicely, they're happy. So Maharaj Nriga had many cows like this and he was giving them in charity. These cows, 
he would give along with the cows he would give gold and land because the more cows you have the more land you need because the cows have to go out they have to have land to graze on so it, it's a, it becomes difficult I was speaking just to one devotee at our temple in Calcutta and he told me uh, we have a we have a we have a new temple in Calcutta it's in the area it's in New Calcutta uh, it's where all the a lot of software companies have come up there Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai so we have a new temple in Calcutta the original temple is at Albert Road in the in the city but there's another temple now in a place called New Calcutta which is over somewhere on the airport site near near not far away from the airport well anyway they have land there they purchased about 25 acres of land and they have cows they have about 20 cows but the devotee told me he said we can't take any more cows he said regularly people come and they want to donate cows to them but he said we don't accept because we don't have enough land to provide for them all because the more cows you have the more land you need you need a one acre for one cow so <laughs> it becomes challenging sometimes so sometimes people want to give charity sometimes you have to refuse just like I remember one time up in North Malaysia one man wanted to donate Radha Krishna deities so we said okay you can you donate the money for serving them also because you, you know it's not just a deity but it's providing garlands for the deity every day you should offer flowers maybe a, gar a garland for the deities every day and then you, offerings have to be made artis have to be offered so the man wanted to give the deities but he didn't want to help to maintain the worship of the deities so we had to refuse and how could we take the deities because it's very difficult it's a lot of expense to maintain the worship of the deities those of you who have deities at home you know you have to purchase clothing for the deities and you have to have jewelry and then you have to get new clothes and new jewelry sometimes and then you have to make offerings and garlands and flowers to be offered so not every it's not everybody can afford to do this and to maintain this kind of worship so sometimes people they want to give cows we have to refuse because it's just not possible to accept to maintain them all anyway Maharaj Nriga he was giving cows it wasn't in this age it wasn't Kali Yuga it was another age and he was giving big quantity very nice cows which were giving milk and they were well cared for they had silver hooves they all had silver plated hooves and they had they were they had, he had nice silken cloth around them and some necklaces also around them so in this way the cows you know they could understand they're really being well cared for and they're very happy in the Ramayana it tells that there are three things which are very difficult to maintain one is cows it's a big responsibility to look after cows you have to take care of. another is deities when you bring the deity to your home it's a responsibility you have to worship properly and the third thing is devotees looking after devotees are also also challenging to take care of an ashram and look after the devotees so those three things are mentioned anyway Maharaj Nriga 
he was giving the cows in charity. Now, actually, His Holiness Krishna Shetra Swami, I, I don't think you know Krishna Shetra Swami, maybe you, anyway, he's a, a very scholarly devotee. He, he completed his PhD from Oxford University in Hindu studies. And he, he wrote a book about taking care of cows. Did you see it? It's an e-book and it's a free download. It's a free download, Krishna Shetra Swami's book on cows. Very, very nice and informative book. And he describes in that book, he talks about different projects which are going on in ISKCON and cow protection. And he mentions about giving cows that you have to be very careful who you give cows to. That when you give charity, you want to be careful who you give charity to. Just like if you, if you give charity to a drug addict, what's he going to do with the money you give him? <laughs> He's not going to use it for Krishna, right? He's a drug addict. He's going to take the money and go and buy drugs. Or if he's an alcoholic, he'll go and buy alcohol. Or if he smokes cigarettes, he'll may go and buy cigarettes. So that's charity in the mode of ignorance. But Maharaj Niga, he was very careful in giving charity. He would give charity to brahmanas, to people who are well situated in the mode of goodness, pure brahmanas, who, who were not rich people, they were not wealthy, they lived very simple lives and they were austere and they were learned in the scriptures also. They had studied the Vedas and so they knew all the duties of the brahmana. They could worship the deities and they could chant the mantras and they could teach the knowledge of the Vedas. So these kind, Maharaj Nriga would find out these kind of brahmanas and give them charity. So it happened, one day he gave charity to the, this one brahmana and somehow he was not very careful because one of the cows went back in to mix with the other cows. And when he gave charity to the next brahmana, he gave a cow which he'd already given in charity to another brahmana. So it happened, the brahmanas realized. One brahmana said, hey, that's my cow. And the other brahmana said, Nriga gave the cow to me. So the brahmanas had a disagreement there. You know, these, these brahmanas were described as being first, first class brahmanas. First class brahmana in the sense that they had vowed no more charity, only taking charity one time. So after they had taken the charity from Maharaj Nriga, they didn't want to take any more charity. So they they both complained that they com they complained to the king you gave this cow to me they both said this you you are you gave it to me you, you gave it to him you gave it to me what kind of person are you and the king was very embarrassed maharaj Niga felt very ashamed and he immediately apologized that this is a mistake it was not my intention Please forgive me, I will give each of you 10,000 more cows to make up for that one cow. I will give each of you 10,000 cows. And the both brahmanas said, no. I want that cow. So this was the problem. And he could not satisfy them. And they both went away in an angry mood. Now, Maharaj Niga had been very pious, but not spiritual. 
He was not really a spiritual person. He was pious, but he was not spiritual. Pious in the sense that he was giving charity. But his purpose was to enjoy the results of giving charity. He was not giving charity for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. He was giving charity for his own benefit. So, he was without sin up until that time. Up until that time when he had uh, displeased the two brahmanas, he did not have any sin. So he'd been living quite a long life. But after the two brahmanas were displeased with him, then he had to suffer some sinful reactions. And the result was, soon after that incident, he died. He left his body. So when he left his body, he was taken to the court of Yamaraj, the god of death, who punishes the sinful. So Lord Yamaraj met with Nriga, King Nriga, and he said to him, you have done a lot of pious activities. You can enjoy heaven for a long time, but you've also done some sin. Would you like to suffer for your sins first, or do you want to enjoy for your pious activities first? What do you want to do? Are you going to enjoy for your, si for your good things first? Or do you want to suffer for your sins first? Huh? <laughs> well, if, if you take, it, there was a story, somebody told me a story that there was one sinful man. He didn't do anything good. One day he just did one good thing. Somehow he's picked, he got a flower, and it, it, he dropped it and he called out, Oh Krishna! He chanted the holy name. He chanted the holy name at that time. Just somehow, he was just inspired, he chanted, Oh Govinda! Oh Krishna! When he dropped the flower. So when he died, he went to Yamaloka and Yamaraj asked him, Do you want to suffer for your sins or do you want to... He said, he said You have a lot of sins. You only did a little good. You want to enjoy the good first? He said, yes, let me enjoy the good first. So, he, 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 the, by, because he had chanted the holy name, he hadn't chanted the pure name, but he chanted the holy name. So he went to heaven, and he got to the heavenly planets, and there he, was ch he chanted, hey Krishna, hey Govinda, he chanted and chanted, and he destroyed all of his sins. So, so that's one way. <laughs> and uh, Maharaj Nriga, however, he said, let me suffer for my sin. So, immediately he fell, it became a lizard in the well. But Maharaj Nriga described to Lord Krishna that he said, while I was in that body of the lizard, I never forgot my past and I could remember all the pious things I'd done. And it's described that one of the pious things which he had done, that one time it happened that as a great king, he was approached by a devotee. And the devotee asked him to build a temple and help. He asked him, build a temple, can you build a temple and could you publish these books for me? I want to print some Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So Maharaj Nigar is very charitable, he did it for this person. So the devotee was so pleased with him, he blessed him, he gave him the benediction that may you be so fortunate to see the Supreme Lord. So. Maharaj Nega was thinking like that, that, oh, he blessed me that I will see the Supreme Lord. So even when he took that body of the lizard, he was thinking, when will I see the Lord? When will I see him?
And so it happened that when he is in the body of the lizard, Lord Krishna came there and picked him out of the well. And from the body of a lizard, he became the demigod. And he didn't just become any demigod, but he became so fortunate that Lord Krishna was standing directly in front of him. So that in itself is very special, that he was able to get darshan of the Supreme Lord. He, he is able to see the Lord. We, as devotees, we are often asked to give blessings, right? The people will come and say, oh, bless me, bless me. So, what kind of blessing should we give? Should we, oh, you should see the Supreme Lord? Do we want to bless people in that way? Not really. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us how to give blessings to people. What is the real blessing we want to give? That when we are asked to give a blessing, we should bless people. Krishna Matir Vashtu. May your mind always be on Krishna. May you always remember Krishna. That is the best blessing. That is the kind of blessing which devotees want to give to other people. And of course we want that blessing ourselves. We want to always remember Lord Krishna. So anyway, Maharaj Niga had that blessing that he would be able to see Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna was actually there in front of him. And Maharaj Niga offered his prayers and glorified Lord Krishna. And then Lord Krishna, uh, after, after offering worship to Lord Krishna, then Maharaj Niga begged permission to go to heaven and to be there. And, he, and Maharaj Niga asked Lord Krishna, he said, please wherever I go, may I always remember your lotus feet and stay engaged in your service. So in this way Maharaj Niga departed and after Maharaj Niga departed then Lord Krishna spoke to his family members. He wants to instruct them and his instruction is very relevant. He, he particularly stresses to them the importance of respecting the property of the Brahmana that you shouldn't take anything which belongs to the brahmana. That if you take anything from a brahmana, then it's worse than taking poison. Because if you take poison, you can get a cure for the poison. But if you take something from a brahmana, there's no cure for that sin. There's nothing you can do about it. You're going to suffer in hell for many lives. So Lord Krishna was very careful to instruct his own family members how they should properly respect the brahmanas. And he went on to tell them that even if the brahmana is sinful, even if this brahmana is nasty to you and curses you, still you should respect them and you should offer your obeisances to them. And in this way you should prop properly honor the person who is Brahmana. So Lord Krishna didn't want his family members to become proud or to become greedy to increase their opulence. He wanted them rather to be satisfied with whatever is given to them by the grace of the Lord. So this pastime is very instructive because it teaches all of us the danger of pride. Actually, the previous chapter, the previous pastime in the Krishna book, in the 10th canto, is about Bana Sura. And Bana Sura had been fighting with Lord Krishna. 
And Banasura's problem was pride. He was very proud of his strength. He had 1,000 arms. And he was so powerful, he could smash a mountain to pieces. And at one point, he even told Lord Shiva, he, he, he asked Lord Shiva that Lord Shiva should fight with him. And Lord Shiva was thinking to kill him. But then Lord Shiva thought, no, I better not kill him because he's my follower. He's my follower, so if I kill him, it doesn't look very good. Anyway, in the future, someone will come and take away his pride. And it happened. Lord Krishna came, of course. Lord Krishna came to rescue Anirudh from the palace of Banasura. And Lord Krishna at that time cut off the arms of Banasura and made him humble. So pride is such a deadly thing that even Lord Krishna has to instruct his own family members about it. The people, the family members living in Dwarka, in Dwarka, up the opulence, wherever there is opulence, we know it can bewilder the mind. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also warns, Bhogaishwarya prasaktanam taya parita chaitasam vaya vasayatmika buddhi samadona vidhiyate. In the minds of those who are attached to material opulence and sense gratification and who are bewildered by such things, then the resolute determination for devotional service does not take place. We have to be very cautious about these two things, boga and aishwarya, material opulence and sense gratification. Lord Krishna therefore is instruct, instructing all of us by instructing his own family, he's instructing each and every one of us to be humble, to take the straw between the teeth and to offer all respects to others and to constantly chant the holy name. Amanena manadena kirtaniya sadahari. Offering respects to others. You may say, oh, they're not a Brahmin. <laughs> but if we're not, if, if we're thinking like that, then what is our Adhikari? They see God only in the temple, only in the deity. But the devotee who is more advanced, they see the Lord in the heart of all living entities. Not only in the temple, but everywhere and in the heart of every live, living entity. So seeing all living entities equally is important for devotional service. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochati Nakanchati Sama Sarveshu Bhutishu Mad Bhaktim Labhate Param. Right? When we are transcendentally situated, then we, we, will be, we will not hanker and lament for anything and we will see all living entities equally. So that kind of vision, that is spiritual vision. Maharaj Niga, he, he got purified just like yesterday we were speaking about how people with material desires may approach Lord Krishna and become purified. So we see Maharaj Niga, he got purified. How did he get purified? By that association with the devotee. Because the devotee came there and he asked, the devotee asked him, build the temple, print the books. And in this way Maharaj Niga was engaged in devotional service and he kept that desire to see the Lord. 
And it happened. The Lord came to see him. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada used to say, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada told us, his Guru Maharaj used to say, don't try to see God, act in such a way that God will come to see you. And just like Maharaj Niga, he was so fortunate, the Lord came to see him and take him out of that lizard body and let him go to the heavenly planets and go on and practice his devotional service. Now he had become purified of his material desires. He could situate himself in devotion to the Supreme Lord Krishna. All right, is there any question? What is the difference between cow charity and Bhagavad Gita charity? What is the difference between cow charity? Cow charity. What is the difference between cow charity and Bhagavad Gita charity? Those things of ancestors and princes and kings, they give charity, cow charity to the Brahmana. Today, they don't have the facilities or the don't have people to give cow. So people are giving well, everything depends on the attitude of the giver. What is your attitude in giving cows? Yeah. Just like we have a temple and if we have cows, then the, the cows will provide milk and they will provide different things which can be used in the service of the deity. So if somebody gives cows, the cows can be used in the service of the deities. And what is the purpose in giving Bhagavad Gita? When we give the Bhagavad Gita, what is your motive in giving Bhagavad Gita? Do you just want people to have a book to sit on their book, bookcase? Sometimes you go to people's home, the book is still in the cellophane. They didn't even open the book. So we have to see what is the attitude of the giver and the receiver. Just like I said, Maharaj Niga he was very careful what, what he gave and who he gave it to. So both things are important. Who, what you're giving and who you're giving it to. You don't just give cows to anybody. You have to give cows to somebody who takes care of cows and who will protect the cows and look after them. And we don't just give Bhagavad Gita's to people who are going to throw them away. We like to give the Bhagavad Gita to people who will read the book and want to understand it. And so it's a very, con uh, it's not an easy question to resolve. You've raised something which is quite difficult. Now, there's so many difficult situations there. Who you give the book to and who you give the cows to will make a big difference. You want to give Bhagavad Gita's? Yes, we do like to give Bhagavad Gita's. But we like to give them to people who are going to appreciate them not just throw the book away once we give them the book. Of course, sometimes even they throw the book away, sometimes somebody else may get the book. And then they can be benefited. But ideally, we like to give the books to people who are interested, who are going to try and read it. Of course, now we have also our Gita Gyan, course going online and people who get the Bhagavad Gita then they should be encouraged also to try to go online and attend the, the Gita seminars which are being given. Very helpful for people to understand the Bhagavad Gita. So these courses are going on all over the world. 
in different languages and they're helping people to understand the Bhagavad Gita. All right? Is there any other question? Yes. Um, practically, how can we uh, practice seeing equal vision uh, in our day-to-day -day activities? How can we practice equal vision in our daily activities? Well, simply by understanding all living entities in the sense that they are like our brothers and sisters. Srila Prabhupada was in Australia and uh, the devotees arranged a program for him to go to one uh, Christian convent. And the people there in the convent, they were followers of a Christian saint called Saint Francis. Maybe you heard Saint Francis of Assisi. So the, the monks there, there was a number of monks in the monastery living there and they were very nice to Srila Prabhupada. And they arranged a banquet for Srila Prabhupada with different fruits and everything. And Prabhupada was very happy there, he liked them, he thought the people were very nice. And one of the monks told Srila Prabhupada, he said that Saint Francis used to talk to the trees and the flowers, he'd say, my dear, sister flower, my dear brother tree. And when Prabhupada heard this, Prabhupada said, oh, that is real God consciousness. And so the monks really appreciated that Prabhupada had respected this vision of Saint Francis. So you're asking how can we see all of these different living entities equally? Just like how do we see our brothers and sisters, you know, we should see them like that. Just like you can see your fellow countrymen, your fellow people, like that, see them like brothers and sisters. In India, of course, in India you have many different religions and different states and cultures. You know, North India and South India are quite different. And then you've got Punjabi and Gujarati and Rajasthani. You've got so many different kinds of people. So in India they encourage everyone, you know, we're all brothers, you know, sub bye bye, you know, the idea that we're all brothers. And so even among people just to get that equal vision is difficult. But we have to expand that vision to all life, to see all living entities equally. That is God consciousness. How to come to that stage? Well, chanting Hare Krishna, simply by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, it will clean the heart and it will take away all of these illusions of the bodily concept of life. And we can see with an equal vision all living entities. But because we are in bodily consciousness, we are identifying ourselves. We are thinking, I belong to this place, I belong to this race, I belong to this community, I belong to this gender. Like that, that this is the bodily conception of life. We want to overcome that bodily conception. And we can do it by devotional service through the medium of hearing and chanting, all of the illusions can be removed and we can understand our real position. We're all parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. There is one Supreme Controller and we are all His servant. So we can think of all living entities like that brothers and sisters. Yes, Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. So when Krishna was telling, be careful not, not taking things from him, 
take, taking the property or whatever possessions of Brahmanas. But then by our discount we have also Brahmi manifestation. And <laughs> I is it that uh, Brahmi manifestation also considered Brahmanas or only those who are at full time uh, doing service for the Lord? <laughs> Doing service for the fo well, Brahman initiation. We do call it Brahmana. Yes, actually, everyone who is strictly following four regulative principles, then they're on the platform of Brahmana. Brahmana means they they asked the devotees who came from India went to England, and they were, what do we need to do be to become a Brahmana? And they were told the four regulative principles. He said, you follow these four principles, you can become Brahmana. Of course, they said it was impossible. But those, that's the requirement. You want to be a Brahmana, you should, be, you should practice the four principles of religion. Cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthfulness. Those are the pillars of religion. A, a Brahmana is a symbol of the mode of goodness. So one who is actually in the mode of goodness, he must observe these four principles. Cleanliness. They should be very pure in their habits. N not, only inter not only externally, but internally also. You have to clean the heart by chanting the holy name. And you have to also clean the body, of course. And then cleanliness, mercy. One should be mer show mercy to all living entities. And if you eat animals, that is not merciful. So a you must be a Brahmana must be a vegetarian. He cannot be a meat-eating Brahmana. That's a Brahmana Bandhu, fallen Brahmana. And then austerity. Austerity means to give, up in, to give up pride, not to be intoxicated. We're very proud. You don't like to offer respects to others. You don't like to bow down. Oh, I'm not going to sit on the floor. No, I'm not you know, like this. Uh, so that is intoxication. We become proud of ourselves. So austerity is to be humble. Austerity is also to avoid intoxication like alcohol and cigarettes and these different things. And then uh, cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness. One should be truthful. Generally people are taught these principles. They're not always taught how to observe these things. You know, people think cleanliness means you wash your hands. They don't think about cleaning the heart. They don't even, may not even take bath regularly, but they talk about cleanliness. You know, sanitize your hands, right? And they give you some chemicals to rub on your hands. Did they ever think about sanitizing the heart, cleaning the heart? And so Brahmana, Brahmanical culture means these principles, cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness. Very difficult for people in this age to follow these principles unless they chant the holy name. If they're chanting the holy name, then it becomes possible. So the regular chanting of the holy name is required, really, for Brahminical culture. There is, there is a Vaishnava Brahmana and there is also the Brahmana Pandit or smarter Brahmana. But we are the Vaishnava Brahmins. Right? Different. The Jati Brahman, somebody is a Brahman by birth, may not follow any of the principles. He works in a job, that's not a Brahman. You work in a job, you do sudra work all day, you claim you're a Brahmana, 
Brahmana should work like a Brahmana. He should worship the deities and teach people to worship the deity. He can study the scriptures and teach the scriptures. And he can accept charity and he can give charity. Those are the activities. According to Shastra, that's what a Brahmana is supposed to do. Brahmana is not supposed to work in the job. You go in the big multinational corporations, so many Brahmanas are there. Oh yes, I'm Brahmana. But they're not working like the Brahmans. So, yes, you can be doing other things. You may have, you may like, somebody's a Vaishya, you do business. Of course, we're not practicing Varnashram Dharma. We're, we don't label people as Brahman, Kshatri, Vaishya, Sudra. We ask, they ask, we ask Prabhupada about this. Should we identify the devotees in different one? No. Prabhupada said no. It, everyone is devotee. So that is equal vision. Of course we give, people are given Brahminical initiation. They're given the Brahminical initiation. They're given the sacred thread. They're given the, the Gayatri Mantra to chant. And they're given the right to worship the deity. To offer the worship to the deity and to chant the Vedic mantras and to do sacrifice. These things. So that's, that opportunity is given to the Brahmanas. If they're, but they have to be strict. They have to be, it's a sign of their purity. That they're following these principles. Without being pure, nobody can go on the altar. Nobody, nobody can just go on the altar unless they're strictly following the regulated principles. Nobody should cook for Krishna unless they're strictly following the principles. And if they're not following, it means they're contaminated. And that contamination will be there in the food and in the worship and it will affect everybody. So that's why we have these rules. The, the worship of the deity and the cooking is meant for people who are twice initiated, who are following strictly, following strictly four principles. That is the Brahman. All right, any other question? Yes, Prabhu. Every living being, whenever they act, either animals or human anything, there is some kind of expectation. But we devotees, while we are doing the services, we also have some kind of expectation in a spiritual mode. But at that, due to our bodily concept, it also swinging both sides. Is it an offense or is it wrong? Well, it's, it's not spiritual, is it? You, you have some expectation, you have some material desire. And so it means you're not acting in the mood of pure devotion. Devotional service, pure devotional service is performed simply for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. But if we have some expectation on our side, then it's not pure devotion. Then it can be just like devotional service, you can do bhakti yoga, it can be in rajagun, it can be in tamagun, and it can be sattvagun. Again, it depends on the attitude. What do you want? What do you want to get from Krishna? So you have some material desires, you have some expectation that Krishna knows. Krishna knows what's in the heart. So Krishna will arrange. Maybe you will get it, maybe you won't. Maybe you have to wait till the next life 
<laughs> or more lives, may, may take lifetimes to get what you want. Just like Queen Rukmini, she wanted to get Krishna as a husband. So she wrote a letter to Lord Krishna and she said in her letter that she was prepared to, to do austerities, great austerities in this life. And if in this life she didn't get Lord Krishna, she said in the next life I, I, I will continue to do austerities, birth after birth until I can achieve Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna appreciated this mood. Rukmini is an example of Atmani Vedana, that she surrendered everything to Lord Krishna. Fully surrendered everything. Just like Bali Maharaj performed Atmani Vedana, Queen Rukmini also surrendered everything to Krishna. She didn't want anything except to please Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. I don't think there's enough biscuits here. <laughs> Not many biscuits. Thank you very much for coming to this program. So we will uh, have also similar Bhagavatam session tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. And uh, we will have an evening program as well uh, for the youth particularly. And uh, for now, we can all come forward and take the Shadam uh, take, uh, from Maharaj. Uh, and we also welcome the Tachanas to give to 